This is the outdoor PCB of higher. If I connect the neutral wire to the connector and then connect the line wire and supply electricity, the LED2 on the PCB turns on, but the LED1 has still not turned on. In such a situation, the first thing we should do is clean the PCB thoroughly because sometimes the dust and dirt make it difficult to understand the components. So, it's a good idea to clean it properly first. Now the first thing we need to check is the SMPS section, particularly the switching IC installed here. In this case, we see a 3AR2280VJZ switching IC, so we need to check if this IC is causing the issue. To confirm this, we should check the two voltage regulators installed here. One on this side is 15 volts, and the other is 5 volts. So we will check both of these voltage regulators, and after that, we will supply power again. When I provide electricity, the LED2 turns on, but LED1 is still not on. To troubleshoot this, the first thing we'll do is check the voltage regulator. There is a 5 volt voltage regulator here, so we'll check how many volts we are getting, and whether it is working properly. Here, we can see that the middle pin of the regulator is ground, so we will take the ground reference from there. So the black probe will be connected to the ground, and the output point of the voltage regulator will be checked. It should show 5 volts. When I check, only a few millivolts are being produced. Let's check the other point that should be producing 15 volts. We'll check if 15 volts are being generated here as well. The center point here is ground, so we will take the ground reference from this point. As you can see, it's showing around 3.5 volts. Let's check the input to see how much voltage is coming in. So when I connect here, it's showing around 3 point something volts. And similar voltage is coming in on the input side as well. This means that the SMPS is struggling to operate properly. Now let's see why it is struggling. It seems like there may be a short circuit somewhere, or the high side is not producing proper voltage. Another possibility is that the switching IC is turning on and off repeatedly, which means it is also malfunctioning. To troubleshoot, we will first check the high voltage side. If there is any fluctuation in the high voltages, it could be causing the issue. Now, look at this position. This is the positive side where an external capacitor is connected. This is its positive terminal, and it is connected here. Let's check this side. Now let's check the chopper or DC to DC transformer to see if the proper voltage is being generated here or not. It's important to check this because sometimes there can be an issue with the PCB traces themselves, which could also cause problems. If we check further back, we might find proper voltage at some point. We need to ensure that the voltage is reaching the point where it is supposed to, so we will check this area thoroughly. If we find proper voltage further back, we'll take the negative point from here for reference. Here you can see that 334 volts DC is being generated. Additionally, the LED is functioning, which means the positive side is working. There is a 1303, approximately 130 kilo ohms, resistor in series with three resistors. Now let's check how much voltage is being generated because the LED is turning on, indicating that the voltage is being produced correctly. We will take the ground reference from this section and then we will check the voltage. Currently, it's showing 334 volts. The three resistors here are potential dividers. As we progress forward, we need to check each resistor individually to see how the voltage drops across them. The voltage is decreasing, and here we see it's down to 220 volts DC. If we move further, checking the second resistor, so here, 110 volts DC have been generated. Similarly, if we see that 100 volts was dropped here, the 100 volts have also been dropped here on this resistor, indicating a consistent drop. Now when we check at this point, which is showing 0.764 volts, we should be getting approximately 3 volts here, but it doesn't correlate directly with the expected voltage. However, it gives us insight into how our DC voltages are behaving, showing just a little under 1 volt, which is why the LED is functioning. We need to check each component individually in this manner to identify any issues. Then, we will determine what the issue is. My approach is that whenever I need to check for a short circuit in the system, I first check the diodes, capacitors, and resistors to see if any of them are causing a short circuit. Initially, I will check if there is any problem with the diodes here. After that, we can move on to the next components. At this point of the circuit, a diode is mounted. I will now disconnect the electricity from the system. I will discharge the system to ensure that the voltages are cleared. There are quite a few diodes in the system, and all these diodes serve as protection to prevent any back voltage or reverse current from damaging the system. These diodes are referred to by different names, so don't get confused. Instead, learn these names to understand that they all serve the same function. 
The first name for these diodes is the freewheeling diode. The second name is the flyback diode. The third is the snubber diode. The fourth is the commutating diode. The fifth is the suppressor diode. The sixth is the clamp diode. And the seventh is the catch diode. To check them, we set the multimeter to diode mode. Now I will check all these diodes. First, I will check diode number 301, and it doesn't seem to show any issues. After changing the probes, I checked again, and it showed a voltage drop of 0.469 volts, indicating that this diode is likely okay. Now let's check diode number 302. It also isn't showing anything. After changing the probes again, it shows a drop of 0.468 volts, which is the same. Now, the remaining diodes in the system, this 5-volt diode, and the rest near it, we will check them later. Next, we will look at the SMPS from the other side. Here, we see diode 304 and diode 303. I will check the diodes, placing the negative probe on the cathode and the positive probe on the anode, and see what we get. Here, it shows a voltage drop of 0.476 volts, which means this diode could also be okay. Lastly, there is another diode, diode number 303, which I will also check. For the anode, I connected the negative probe and for the cathode, the positive probe. This diode is showing a voltage drop of zero, which means it is short-circuited. I will change the sides of the probes and place them on the diode again, the positive probe on the anode and the negative probe on the cathode, and it's still showing zero. So it appears that this diode is indeed showing a short circuit, which is confirmed. Therefore, I will start working on this diode first, and then we can move on to the next component. Now, since this diode is defective, we can see that it is part of the output of the transformer on one side. The anode is connected to the positive voltage. Positive voltages will be generated from this point and will move to this point, as this is the cathode. So what will happen is that the voltage won't be able to go back. This diode is used for protection. If this diode becomes short-circuited, you can see that it's causing a problem here. We'll know more after we replace it. To remove it, we'll add solder. Adding solder makes desoldering easier. Now we'll add solder to the other point as well. The diode number is SB5100. Before changing it, I will check to see if it is indeed faulty. It is showing zero. I am confirmed that it is defective. So, we will replace it with a new diode, SB5H100, which is almost identical, but rated for 5 amperes. I will install the new diode now. After changing the diode, I will turn the electricity back on. I notice that LED1 has turned on and it is switching, indicating that the issue was caused by just one defective diode. Before handing it back to the customer, I will check some voltages, because if we don't attach it to the indoor unit for testing, checking the voltages is crucial. Here, the 5 volt regulator is functioning correctly. Likewise, I checked the 15 volt supply, which is also providing exactly 15 volts. Another important test is for the IPM. The functioning of the circuit indicates that the microcontroller is turning on, but we need to confirm that the voltage is proper. I placed the negative probe on the negative point and checked the positive, which showed 326 volts. The center point should show about 15 volts, and it is showing 14.7 volts, which is acceptable. I checked the next point, and it also showed proper voltage. This means that the IPM is functioning correctly, and now we can guarantee to the customer that once the system is installed, there will be no issues. Click on the left or right thumbnail to watch our next videos, and subscribe. Thank you.